Make no mistake, Jan Thomas can hit. She's fast, she's accurate, and she's relentless. Her precision is like that of an artist. Like Eli Dempsey, his colorful array of pens and pencils float across the paper effortlessly, quickly creating an image that conveys a delicate artistic passion. There are many out there, working, creating, healing, producing, living. I think it was three days after the stroke and this neurologist came up to me and she said, right, right in my face, and said, make sure they're always talking to you, not, you know, it's easy to talk around anybody. And I should have realized then that she was talking to me and in my head, I thought I was talking back, but I wasn't saying anything. Jan, Eli, and all the people you see here have aphasia. They are all fighting to play an important role in their families and their communities. They are trying to be whole again. If anybody has anything they want to share, um, you know, or talk about. We may Thursday be. night at the Richmond Area <laughs> Aphasia Support Group. Coffee, snacks, the truth, and support. A lot of support. My, my daughter first started uh, the aphasia group here. Uh, and, and I said, you know, honey, leave me alone. You know, <laughs> leave me alone. I, I'm not interested. You know, that's for somebody else. Leave, leave me be. I have my books. I have whatever. Leave me alone. And says, Mom, you're gone. You're gone. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's been wonderful. It really has been wonderful. People with aphasia fit into a rarely talked about neurological category. Defined, aphasia is the loss of a previously held ability to speak or understand spoken or written language due to disease or injury of the brain. That's one definition. There are, however, many different manifestations. In aphasia, the primary impairment is in language, but not thinking. And in dementia, the primary impairment is in thinking, with perhaps language also. Bear in mind that aphasia is a combination of a number of different symptoms. The symptoms would include difficulties with um, conversation or connected speech, auditory comprehension, so understanding the spoken word, repetition, word retrieval, naming, word finding, um, reading comprehension, and writing. Each of those different symptoms can be variably impaired, so that a person may have very severe impairments in expression, but will have uh, very good comprehension. So, Sheldon, how long ago uh, did you suffer the um, stroke that caused the aphasia? It was the May. Understanding these factors and understanding the different manifestations of aphasia will help care providers create a productive clinical experience for people with aphasia. With that, then it makes sense. And I cannot say this word. This is, I couldn't say it before or after, but it's my excuse that I can't remember. Because when I was doing this for my speech, if I couldn't say the word, sometimes I'd kind of come around all the way around in different ways. And there's a name for that. Mm -hmm. Cushion. Almost. Almost. Uh, cir cir circus. Cir Circum. Circumlocution. Cosletion. Circumlocution. Circus talking around in a yes. circle. Yes. Yeah. And, and she said that. My daughter asked, can you say the word circus? She says, yeah, it's a. F so. <laughs> Don't have to say the word. Uh, please, you, I but, you, but, that but, but you described it, which is wonderful. You used circumlocution and some okay. gesture to define circumlocution. Well, thank you. Okay. And so you communicated that, which is great. But the bottom line is that you want to communicate information. Even if you are not terribly efficient at it, you're still communicating the information. One of the first things that is vital to understand when working with people of aphasia is their lives can be quite frustrating. My biggest frustration, frustration was that I used to have uh, very good, 
vocabulary. And all of a sudden, I can't depend on it. And so I would, you know, you $25 words that you used to throw out there with everybody, I couldn't find it. And boy, <laughs> it was just terrible, still is. I, I just could not understand something. I, I could, it was difficult to hear words, but particularly when I tried to, to talk back or communicate back, couldn't do it. It's just like only a few words that I could do was like two or three words, and I could curse pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Frustrated. Um. Can people be insulting? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You don't necessarily have the, um, not, not, not only not the words, but you don't have the way to go from one dot to the next in your brain. That frustration is the result of years of being able to communicate effortlessly as a lawyer, as a public speaker, as a colleague, and suddenly having that ability shut down. You withdraw. Um, I, I guess I'm not the only one who withdraws. That's true. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's, a, it's, it's so different. Perhaps even more frustrating than the ability to communicate is the stigma that oftentimes results from this sudden disability. Got the words and they're formed, mm -hmm. but it hits my mouth and it is, I can't say it. Oh, and, yes. You know, oh. and that's what um, you talk about intelligence, people see that then and uh, they assume that um, you're, you know, oh, well, she can't say it and she must not think it or feel it. It's easy to put you, you in a box. They, oh, they can't talk, um, they have aphasia, you know treat them the same way. And that is one of the key factors in treating people with aphasia. Like all people, no one is the same. But one of the big things that he's commented to me is that the professionals as a whole want to approach everything the same with each patient. Mm -hmm. And you really need to be creative and think outside of the box. There are some simple and yet important steps a care provider can take to ensure good two-way communication, the kind where both patient and provider have a clear understanding. The first is quite easy, but requires a little extra patience. Listen, truly listen. It is a technique that's good to use, and I try to do it when I'm working with a patient. I want the patient to feel that they are um, not being rushed, I want the patient to feel that they are being attended to. I want to indicate to the patient that I am paying attention to them. Well, number one, I would say get to know the person because you learn what unique needs they have. Um, secondly, I would say very specifically, slow down, slow your rate. Um, make sentences a little shorter. Repeat or rephrase if you see that they aren't understanding. Um, allow them plenty of time to attempt to speak, but know that if, it, if they get very frustrated, it's probably just hurting their communication. It's probably making it more difficult. Um, also, one of the things that we've worked on is using gestures and body language. By being patient with the individual, I want that person to um, feel that, that uh, uh, I have all the time in the world so that they will be able to express themselves. I think one of the most important things is that the, the provider um, kind of confirm with the patient an understanding of what they have said because frequently, I mean, and I've found this particularly early on with Sheldon's stroke, someone would ask him a question and his automatic response was yes, even if he didn't understand what they were saying at all, he was accommodating. Um, and 
early on particularly, it's very important, I think, for doctors and therapists to write things down as much as possible because it's overwhelming. You cannot prepare yourself in advance for having a stroke or dealing with what it's going to be like. Sometimes a person will only have sparing of some very simple words like yes and no. And so it appears that when you ask them a question and they respond to you that they have understood. Yet most times, they do have the ability to understand. It's a matter of a caregiver finding the right method to communicate effectively. Well, one thing I would say, <clears throat> they have to speak slowly. I mean, I, um, I don't know if everybody feels that way, but um, I can't process it quickly. And so doctors tend to talk fast, you know. Yeah. And um, they, um, even the ones who know um, not to talk fast. Understand also that words coming from an aphasic may not always express what that person means. Aphasia can be weird. Sometimes I try to say something like happy birthday. Instead, something different but related comes out like Merry Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You have programmed yeah, yeah. all that in there? Yeah. Yeah. So when, when you're having a conversation with somebody, do you sometimes uh, use that application? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. This young man, he can't talk, my talk, but his art. Is spectacular. Yeah. Yeah. Spectacular. One of the parts of aphasia is that you also can have what they call receptive aphasia where you have difficulty understanding and I don't know to what extent Sheldon has a little bit of that so sometimes you might ask him a question and you have to start over but if if he doesn't understand the question with somebody else or with that somebody else is saying to them, instead of phrasing it a different way, they come closer and louder, and you know they get in his face like, like he's deaf. And he's not deaf. He's just having difficulty processing the words. I can't talk. I can't speak. But if I can point it, I can say, "Somebody do this, please," and they'll read it. And I'll understand it because it works here. It just doesn't work here. That's the big thing. But when they do that and say that, they'll remember it and the rest of the group will remember it. So it's sort of taking that lemon and making a lemonade for someone that can help. Have you found over the years that there are certain ways that you like listeners, such as me, to interact with you uh, or things that you don't like listeners to do? The big key is, is to, to speak slowly or mm -hmm. quick, not slow, but just easily, mm -hmm. short, Mm -hmm. and don't interrupt when I'm trying to talk or listen. And they'll interrupt, and I'm like, like three or four words, and they'll interrupt. If that happens by the second or third time, I'm in the doo-doo. Uh, the goal that we have is to communicate. Yes, sir. Uh, letting go of the, the little errors that uh, you may produce that are irrelevant. What you first of all want to do is accept communication. If the communication is acceptable, if it is functional, accept it. Don't overcorrect the person. Don't um, badger them. Don't frustrate them by demanding perfection. Rather, accept that the communication has worked and the information has been transmitted and that should be adequate. Acceptance, it's a powerful word. All of these people with aphasia know they have something important to offer. They are trying to help themselves and support each other as they endeavor to break down the barriers of their disability and reveal to the world again their capabilities by once again communicating effectively. That's why it's important to help people we know with aphasia find or create these types of support groups in their communities. It is, to many of these people, a godsend. I went to the European Stroke Conference and it was really good. Um, and I, um, I, it came up kind of suddenly. Did you go by yourself? I did. <laughs> 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 
this is the best thing that we have, is talking to each other, because we were at different stages in our aphasia. And when I came in, I could speak just like I am now, and he was cussing at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it's wonderful. And you can, send, when Eli comes, you know, we want him to realize that it's not going to always be as bad as it is. Yeah. It's, it's a place where you can be totally comfortable because everybody in the room is dealing with what you're dealing with in some form or another and to some degree or another. So we all have similar frustrations and challenges and it's just, a, we, you, you know, you're not gonna offend anyone if you complain about something or you say something negative or positive or whatever, everybody, kind of understands where you're coming from. A yeah. lot of the therapists and, and Three, doctors four, or whatever, I don't think really five, know five, what five, support five, groups are available in the area. There wasn't one here. Right. <laughs> I mean, we uh, yeah. formed it. And the results of this kind of attention can be the discovery of abilities no one ever knew they had. Eli is drawing with his left hand. He was right-handed before a stroke rendered that hand useless. He really initiated all this on his own. He just started um, drawing and we all were very impressed and encouraged him to keep doing more and more and more. Um, and then you took an art class. Yeah. Um, and I think that helped you some, but yeah. really he just, I think he just enjoyed doing it and so spent a lot of time on his own practicing. Learn respect. Respect, acceptance, patience, understanding. Applying these techniques will allow healthcare providers to help people with aphasia break down these frustrating barriers and begin to feel whole again.